All across the eastern U.S., a tenacious bug makes a long-awaited debut. Teeming just below the ground beneath your feet, millions of cicadas will wait years to emerge into the wild blue yonder. But why do they wait so long? And how do they know how long to wait? It's all a game of numbers as this bug ensures its survival with the awesome power of math here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Live Death and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I am Carlos. And today we're talking about a periodic pest, but more of them later. <laughs> it's going to be so funny later. You guys, know the, <laughs> you guys know what's what about this bug? Oh, goodness. That that hurt. But I, but I liked it a little bit, so it was, it was, it was, it was a mixed bag. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. It was a mixed bug. It was a mixed bug. Is it a true bug? Yes, it is. Ooh, okay. It's the it's the uh, cicada. We're talking generally about the cicada. We're going to specifically mention the Southeast Asian cicada, uh, but we're going to also talk about the periodic cicada, the periodical cicada. That's a cicada uh, that writes articles. <laughs> it writes. It's it's very good at writing op eds. It maintains a blog. We we found a bunch of letters to the editor from the cicada. <laughs> uh, do you want to tell me some things? I want to tell you a couple things. Um, one is that I thought it was called the giant colorful cicada, the te- Tacua speciosa. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. I think it's called the giant colorful cicada. Okay. But anyway, so we have some nicknames for this. Uh, Brian sent one in with his uh, usual wit. Um, when he, uh, when he sends us the art, which by the way, uh, if you have not seen Brian's art, which I ran into somebody who was like, how do I see the art? Um, I can't see it on, uh, I think it was Apple podcasts. And I was like, go to the website. Yeah. This is a nice little website for you. LDTaxonomy.com. It's that easy. Uh, and then you can see all of Brian's amazing art. You can also see it on, uh, our Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, LD Taxonomy is our uh, handle or whatever you call the Facebook one. You can also see it on Spotify if you listen on Spotify. Oh, can you? Nice. Yeah. So Brian sent this one. It's called Sick Cada Bro. <laughs> um, I saw this one as the title of an article that I was reading for research. It was called Brood Awakening. That's good. Uh, I loved it. Um, but we're, I'm going to call it here the, the Pest of Both Worlds. And uh, optimal primes, which that's the last one will make a lot more sense uh, about halfway through the the um, the major fact. Okay, you want to hear about what science is calling it? Sure, sure, sure. It's in the kingdom you know, love, and are in the kingdom Animalia. Uh, the phylum is Anthropoda. That's where bugs live. Did you say uh, Anthropoda? I always say that. The the <laughs> R like is like my brain sees an N because of it like feeds right into that t just a horrifying bug man <laughs> man bug arthropoda that's where bugs live the class is insecta the order hemiptera i think that's true bugs true bugs suborder oh my Good. achenorinth achenorinchka ch achenorinka there's two ch's achenorinka yeah that could be that. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a doozy. <laughs> the infra order is more a little bit more familiar. The sic sicadormorpha or dor morpha. Sicadormorpha. I don't have an R there. I have cicadomorpha. That's what I said. <laughs> cicadomorpha. I said dormorpha the first time, and then I said I, uh... cicadomorpha. <laughs> And then the super family, which is there are two super families. The uh, one is cicadas. the Incredibles. What is it really? It's Cicadoidae. Oh, why is it called the Incredible? Why are you calling it the Incredibles? Because they're a super family. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> oh, oh, but that went one. right over your head. Uh, well, well, you said it's this. It's the Incredibles. Like I thought, the, they're like this. The name of the super family was like something like Incredibilis or something like that. No, no, no. The one you said it's two super families, and one of them has to be the Incredibles. So gotcha. So family. one is the Incredibles, and one is Cicada Cicada Day. Uh, the family is Cicada Day, and the su- subfamily is Cicada Nay. <laughs> there's so yeah. many subs of this; it's very specific. Yeah, there's uh, an order, a suborder, an infra order, a superfamily, a family, a subfamily, a tribe, which a is tribe. Tac- Takuine, Takuini, Takuini, genus Takua, and the species is Speciosa. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow. <laughs> okay. It's an ape uh, named ape. Yeah. Uh, so the bin- you know, binomial name is Takua Speciosa. Nice. Well, since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show, Critter Groups, which is the part of the show where I ask you a question, and that question is the same every single time, and that is, what is the name of the collective noun for this animal? Or what is the name of the just a group of this animal? Um, terms of venery. Uh, so, Joe, what is the name of a group of cicadas? Is it A? Now, so there's just there's a specific one that so you you would technically so, uh, meaning the other options are also very viable. They they might sound viable, but they are technically wrong. Uh, that, so, is, if you saw a group of cicadas, would you say, Hey, look out for that A, swarm of cicadas. B, colony of cicadas. C, hive of cicadas. Or D, burrow of cicadas. I know they burrow. They burrow. They don't live in hives. Swarm is obvious because they swarm. What was the th- second one? Colony. Colony. I'm going to go with colony. Even though they don't live in colonies, it'll be like the last time when it was colony and they don't live in colonies. Final answer? Yep. Ding, ding, ding. You're correct. I <laughs> thought I would get you with that one. With at nope. least swarm or burrow. They don't live in colonies. So, well, maybe they do in an early stage. In I, a nymph stage. I, I have a, a, a theory Okay. that I'll talk about later. Well, anyway, I'm ra- right again. I feel like I've been right for the past few times. Yeah, you've, you've had a lucky streak. Here we go with the description. Cicadas are a relatively large family of insects with large heads, uh, large eyes, and these eyes are set apart widely on their heads. They have a very signature look in that regard. Like Sid the Sloth. Yes, exactly like Cicada the Sloth. Um... Cicadas spend most of their lives as nymphs, which is a stage before they are adults. Um, As nymphs, they are brown, wingless insects with oval-shaped bodies, not unlike a cockroach, but not exactly like one. Uh, When they reach the adult stage, they have wings. These wings are delicate with a thin membrane supported by chitinous what i will call branches but i'm sure has a more technical name uh you know like that veins that, like yeah, veins, veins veins lightning strikes you know that kind of shape and pattern i think the they're south, called veins though the do they carry blood i think they carry something or do they or are they just structure for these this membrane to stretch across i, I don't know uh, the Southeast Asian cicada is the largest and most powerful uh, most powerful cicada with black bodies that sport yellow, red, and blue stripes, which is pretty interesting for a bug. But we all know how much Carlos loves blue animals. Blue! <laughs> did, did, did you hear you that? Just, it's blue! Uh, when you come up with animals, do you just type in like a list? Did you just include uh, the full list of blue animals? Yes, it's just all all the blue animals I could think of, or the animals that can be blue, including like Humboldt squids and stuff like that, and uh, animals that are uh, that look at the sky a lot, and therefore the reflection off their eyes is sometimes blue. <laughs> okay, 
Uh, cicadas live all over the world, including the Americas, Australia, Asia, Europe, uh, you know, the whole nine yards. And nine continents. Yeah. Not nine. But, but I mentioned they were large. Would you like to know how large they are? I think I got the idea. We can oh, well, on. here we go. I'm going to get make it way clearer and way more relatable. Uh, welcome to the beloved Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send in your audio of yourself singing, saying, chittering, uh, the words Measure Up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have any new Measure Up intros this week. No. That means we get to hear from an animal. Ugh. And Carlos has to guess which it, which it is. Uh, let me just pull that up. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Sound like a finch. Well, that's interesting that you should say that because here are your options. A, a finch. <laughs> oh, darn it. I forgot that it was just multiple choice. B, a gopher. <laughs> C, a baby alligator. Or D, a squeaky shopping cart wheel. That D is not fair. It can't be inanimate objects. It's either a throwaway or it's not fair. Well, it's um, about you're about to find out for sure. I guess gopher. B. Final answer? Yes. That is correct. Yes. It is a gopher. I have to remember not to... Well, actually, that also ruled it out for me. <laughs> Finch. Why? Because you added it in in response to me men- mentioning that it sounded like a finch. No, I full-on had it written down, all of these options. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I don't Look believe at, you y- had finch. A specific kind of bird, a finch. Yeah, I'll tell you exactly why I chose Finch in a second, but first I'm going to take a picture of this and send it over to you because you don't believe me. Uh, in the morning, I sit in the back porch, and there's these two finches um, that come around and eat bugs off the screen, and they sound, they they call to each other, and they sound exactly like that. Huh. So I chose. So finch. I was. So we we just both know what finches sound like. So it's not like a, that much of a coincidence. We're just uh, good ornithographers. Uh, yeah, exactly. We are. We're the we're the bird men. Uh, without, That's Michael Keaton. Let's get right into the length of these bad boys. Uh, the Southeast Asian cicada, or what did you call it? The colorful cicada. Giant colorful cicada. Yeah, is the is largest the- species between. 4.7 and 5.7 centimeters. Uh, let's, or if you speak American, 1.9 to 2.2 inches. Let's call it two inches. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. How many cicadas go into the length of the longest motorcycle? That's it. The longest motorcycle. <laughs> 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 I, I typed that in, and I was like. Uh, longest motor, like long. I just typed in longest something just to see to get some inspiration, and it came up with motorcycle. And I clicked on it, and it was just the longest motorcycle, longest, not the jump, not the not the longest ride. Longest, longest motorcycle. motorcycle. Here's a hint. Uh, Baharat Sin Parmar is a man's name, and he holds the record for the longest motorcycle. He was also a claimant for the longest crutches and the longest spade. I don't think he holds those other ones, but he does hold the motorcycle one still. Um, And to gain the title, he had to ride the bike 100 meters unassisted. Like any bike, it has two wheels. The longest spade. Yeah, it looks like a big old shovel. It's a dumb thing to have a superlative for. (laughs) Yeah, but if you... uh, are a craftsman with time, why not get yourself some Guinness records, you know? But the fact that there's, like, more than one person out there that's like, yes, I would like to compare all of the spades and decide that this man's spade is the longest spade. The guy with the longest crutches is somebody else from, like, his region of India. Huh. So, it's a, it's a, it's a dog-eat-dog world out there. People making bigger and bigger spades. 
and crutches and motorcycles i'm imagining that this is one like just just this really relaxed harley davidson (laughs) this is so laid back you can you actually lay back in it uh you could take a nap curl up with a fuzzy blanket um and it, it just drives um straight I, I suppose the hard the hard part is like this long thing with two wheels trying to drive it without falling over i'm gonna say this thing is um 10 10 feet that seems like a lot for a motorcycle um so and you said this is two inches which means six of them go into a foot which means 60 of them go into the world's longest motorcycle Uh, 60? Yes. Okay, that's wrong. Uh, so the answer is 517.5 cicadas. I'm the sorry? The bike was 20, 26.29 meters or 86 feet and 3 inches. I, I, I have to see a picture of this. So it looks ridiculous. It's basically two pieces of a motorcycle split apart and connected by a very long rector set a giant like looks like like metal rector set looking thing it 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 looks silly but it works oh that's so dumb (laughs) that is so dumb that's like fair it's not connected by more motorcycle it's connected by metal and that's it you can't unless you put more wheels on there you can't utilize all that space this guy's outfit though yeah, <laughs> he looks he looks like he's Buffalo Bill made out of bottle caps. <laughs> that seems I don't I've seen him and I don't know what that means, but he's just uh-huh. covered in like little circular medallions, but it's all like tassels and it looks almost kind of like a Native American thing that not the serial killer Buffalo Bill, the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, he, he it, it's a beautiful ensemble. Is this this is that I feel like that uh, that's not what I at all was I was expecting. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's the longest motorcycle for you. Uh, defying ex- expectations. Let's talk about decibels. Something we don't usually measure. The loudest cicada is the African cicada that reaches 106.7 decibels. Uh, the African cicada. Call uh, African cicada calls are equal to the combined sound of how many nearby whispers? Um, I'm gonna say. Here's a hint: zero decibels marks the threshold of audible sound to a human being, and 140 decibels is the threshold of physical pain and hearing damage. Cicadas are louder than a motorcycle. That's like about 30 feet away. Uh, louder than a nightclub and louder than a, a construction site, and they're a little less than a chainsaw. Um, I'm gonna say what you. How many decibels did you say it was? It is 106.7. I'm gonna say 106.7 whispers. I think a whisper is one decibel. Uh, the correct answer is 3.5. Oh, whispers are whispers loud. are are that are about three to five feet away are 30 decibels. Wow, I would not have guessed that. I would have put that three to five feet away. Yeah, and uh, rustling leaves are like 20 decibels, and a pin drop is 10. What is one? Maybe Probably like a tic-tac landing on a couch cushion. <laughs> <laughs> That's from an Olin Rogers video. I, uh, wish I, I wish I came up with my own thing just now. That was pretty good. <laughs> That was a that was a throwback to a good video, <laughs> uh, or a butterfly landing on a Q-tip. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Copious amounts of cooking. Uh, let's talk about fast facts. Are you ready for that? I'll wait for a plane to go by first. How many decibels is that? One hundred and forty. Oh, actually, one hundred forty. Like the space a spaceship launch, a space shuttle, a rocket launch, essentially is a. Uh, about 150 decibels, and it can like wreck your world if you st- you're too close. I I imagine it'll wreck your world in more ways than one. I, I think your ears will be the least of your. Well, concerns. even if you're, I think out of like I think I when it when it out of incineration. I watched range. a video based on like what happens 
um, in in any given radius away from a rocket launch. And like, yeah, when close by, you're getting incinerated. But like farther away, like the shock wave is killing you. Farther away is um, like hearing loss and stuff like that. Same thing with uh, like a nuclear explosion. Even further away is just mild indigestion. <laughs> and then even further away is, ooh, look at that. Um, it, you get to yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> uh, and then even further away is like you don't even know about it. That's true. Let's talk about fast facts. Cicadas are a food source for bats, wasps, mantises, spiders, birds, fish, amphibians, and basically anything that's willing to eat a big bug. Cicadas are clumsy and sluggish in their adult stage, so they may turn to camouflage, playing dead, flashing bright colors to stun and escape, and mimicking toxic animals. Uh, by flashing bright colors, I mean like opening up their wings and showing colors, not like bioluminescence or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, though these large flying insects are intimidating to people that are squeamish with bugs, uh, they're relatively harmless to humans. They don't bite or sting. They feed on plant sap, so they're not really, they don't really like wreck crops or anything like that. Uh, though they may land on you, mistaking you for a plant and try to nibble at you. So be careful of that. Worse than However, nightmare. sustained blasts from a, a male cicada's call can damage human hearing. So they're less than 140, but if you sit there under a cicada tree or something, and you just hear it for a long period of time, you could come away with ringing ears. Kind of like when you go to a rock concert or go to the gun range yeah. with no hear head headphones. Uh, that's all I got for fast facts. All right. It is time for the major fact. And we might go a little bit over on this one because I've got a lot. The more I researched, the more interesting this animal became. Uh, all right. So I know we went over the giant colorful cicada, but the species with the most study in its life cycle is the uh, mad magis cicada. The magic we'll cicada. Magis yeah, the magic cicada. Magis cicada septendecula. Magis cicada sep septendecula, um, which is endemic to the U.S. And so that's one... Uh, basically the ones that are in the U.S. are the ones we're going to talk about uh, for the major fact. Um, so most insects have a pretty short lifespan. Some flies, like mayflies, only live for 24 hours. Their entire lives amount to hatching, feeding, mating, and dying, all within a day. Um, and this is mostly due to the fact that insects are rarely equipped to handle winter as adults, so their lifespan is usually shorter than a year, uh, with larvae uh, hatching in the spring and dying before winter. But there are exceptions, though, uh, with some insects. For example, some termite queens can live for 10 to 15 years, and all they do is just lay eggs all day. Uh, but the cicada even has the queen bee. After mating, a female cicada will lay her eggs in the slit she cuts into uh, the bark of a tree branch. And those eggs will hatch into nymphs, like you mentioned, instead of larvae. And nymphs are kind of a... Are, are like a mini version of the adult instead of a worm or caterpillar-like larva. Um, so the nymphs will drop from the branch and burrow into the ground beneath the tree with their strong forelimbs. They'll spend the next 17 years burrowing around, feeding on xylem sap, which is sap from the root of plants specifically. Um, and if they're in the swamp... Uh, or like muddy or wet ground, they'll create burrows above ground in little mud towers. So if you type in cicada mud towers, uh, you'll just see like little, uh, you know, five, six inch, um, what looks like termite towers. Uh, so at the end of the instar, which an instar is a stage of a bug's life, <laughs> uh, the nymph will carve an exit tunnel and climb onto the tree they hatched from or one that's nearby. The, there they'll molt their ex exoskeleton. So they look like those little cockroaches as nymphs, but then they'll molt that. And then they'll leave behind um, their that exoskeleton, which is called an exuviae. And so the, sh the, the exuviae will split along the back and the, the cicada will, the adult cicada, wings and all, will climb out, leaving the exuviae Exuviae um, still attached to the tree. And I remember uh, back 
at my grandparents' house in Indiana, we used to find these things all over the place on all the trees. And so we would take them and we would attach them to our shirts and stuff like that. So we looked like we were covered in bugs, but it was really just a an empty husk. It was, you know, we were weird yeah. kids and it was yeah. outside. Uh, so some variants have a 13-year life cycle while others go up to a 17-year life cycle. Um, but there's it's no, there's no in between. It's either... I, I, sorry, I didn't mean to say up to. It's 13 or 17. It's just those two. These two groups are called together periodic cicadas, which is why you said the periodic pest. And these periodic cicadas are broken down into 15 broods. And in each brood, all the cicadas emerge at the same time every 13 or 17 years. Depending on region. So you can... No, the brood always... The brood is the region. So if you, you can look up a brood map, and you'll see the eastern half of the United States. And, um, for example, you'll see brood one located in a specific lo- specific region. And that one, um, brood one, uh, emerges from the ground once every 17 years. And all of the ones in that brood emerge at the same mm. time. Um and so obviously this is chaotic since they have such a loud chirp, like you mentioned, and you put a few million of them in a square mile and you have a deafening love ballad on your hands because that's what they're doing. They are chirping to signal uh, for mates. So here's a little, t- I'll, I'll give you an example. So brood X is the biggest brood uh, in the United States. It's brood 10 because they go by Roman numerals. Like iPhone um, 10 <laughs> and only iPhone 10. Yeah. <laughs> And Xbox. It's, it's uh, 10 box. <laughs> it's, a, it's a 10 box. So Brood X, um, every, every 17 years, all of the nymphs in Brood X will emerge, mate, and die within two weeks. The most recent emergence for Brood X was 2004. So all of them emerged in 2004. So we can expect it to emerge again next summer, 2021, because that's 17 years. Mm. But that's just one brood. And remember, there are 15. And each brood emerges in a different year. Well, at least every... Each brood... Uh, so every 17-year brood emerges in a different year. And every 13-year brood emerges in a different year. So the 17-year broods will never overlap. But it is possible for the 17 and the 13-year broods to overlap. So, and the regions sometimes overlap as well. So, um, let's try to... This is where it gets interesting because it gets down to the numbers. Um, so, th- this is why many areas see will see cicadas every year. But it's just different broods. They don't, they, they don't see the same broods um, every year because one brood will emerge, die, and then they w- won't be seen again for 17 years. Um, but then maybe the brood that's nearby will hatch the next year so on and so forth um so there are uh, for the of the 17 year cicadas there are 12 broods and of the 13 year cicadas there are three broods and so once they are once they emerge they're eaten in mass by pretty much every animal that eats that could possibly eat an insect like you mentioned there are but even that many predators or different kinds of predators barely make a scratch on the population. And this is called predator satiation, which is a re- reproductive adaptation that some animals have where an animal or a species will spawn large volumes of members at the same time to ensure that they won't be predated to extinction. So this is like krill or sardines um, and fruit bearing trees will do the same thing. They'll, they'll All their fruit will show up at the same time so because if they only gave a couple fruit every couple of weeks, they, it would never, uh, they would just all be so eaten. many that, that it fills the bellies of everything around and, and still, and has, still plenty has to spare some to spare. So it has plenty to do its purpose, <laughs> uh, which is to reproduce. So if you notice 13 and 17 have something in common, can you guess what they have in I common? I cannot and will not, actually. You refuse? <laughs> well, if you twist my arm about it. Uh, do they like to wear the same hats? 
the numbers 13 and 17. Like oh, the prime at the prime numbers. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they wore hats yes, or they, something. I don't know. Dark horse. They, they wear prime hats, yeah. uh, which means that they can only be divided by one and themselves, um, which it, it makes them special numbers. Predators have population cycles too, which means they peak at certain times. Uh, their their population does. Uh, in most predators adapt their life cycles to coincide with their favorite prey. So if a prey has a life cycle of two years, then the choice predator will also have a life cycle of two years or a population cycle of two years so that when there are the most rabbits, there will be the most foxes, so on and so forth. Hmm. So if cicadas had a 12-year cycle, then any predator with a two, three, four, or six-year cycle, uh, population cycle, could adapt to coincide with the cicadas. So if, if through the process of adaptation they coexisted long enough, um, every predator with any of those cycles, because they're all divisible by 12, will be there and it will be at their height when the cicadas emerge on that 12th year. So that drastically reduces the chances of the of that particular brood surviving their emergence. But that's not the case. It's not 12. It's their prime numbers, which means they can't be... Which means that uh, um, it re- significantly reduces the chances of any specialist predator being able to adapt its life cycle to take advantage of the emergence. So... For example, if a predator had a population cycle of every five years reaching its peak, it would only coincide with any particular brood every 85 years. So that means that predators can't develop to depend on the cicada uh, emergence for their food. So, for example, like um, um, there are times of the year when sardines will spawn and millions of them will form these huge bait balls. And there are whole predator groups that their their population cycle is adapted to when the, when the sardines spawn, they are at their height and they can take advantage of this and feed. And so that's not good for the sardines. Fortunately, there's a lot of them. Um, but that's because their, um, their, their cycles are... They coincide, but... No predators' cycles can coincide unless they have either a one-year cycle or a seventeen-year cycle, because these are um, prime numbers. And if you have a seventeen-year cycle uh, or a one-year cycle, you're still not depending on the cicada, because all of those off years, you're trying, you have to eat other things. Well, it's not the cicada is not defending itself as a species. The broods are defending themselves as individual groups. So, um. Plenty of animals depend on the cicada because cicadas spawn every year, but one particular brood only spawns every 17 years. Mm. So if I'm a, I don't know, a lizard or something, every summer some brood of cicada is spawning somewhere. Um, So I can eat cicadas, but I can't prey on the same brood every year, only once every 17 years. So that's that's to protect the brood. And um, so... But this is, doesn't just protect them from predators. It also protects them from each other because the whether or not they're 13-year or 17-year cicadas um, is based on their genes. This is determined um, by their genetic code. Um, so if they interbreed, if a 17-year if a cicada interbreeds with a 13-year cicada, then it's going to throw everything off because then one was then their offspring are going to emerge earlier or later by themselves and get eaten so uh that's why and having these both be prime numbers makes it so that that's almost it's it's not impossible it's not even improbable but it's it does not happen often in fact in 2015 brood 9 which is a 17 year brood called the kanzen brood hmm. and brood 23 uh, which is a 13 year brood called the lower mississippi river valley brood <laughs> they emerged at the same time in 2015 and the regions were pretty close to each other but fortunately they didn't overlap because but because their uh, cycles are prime numbers this only happens every 221 years so this won't happen again 
9 and 23 will not emerge at the same time until 2236, the year 2236. Whoa. And the broods are all, they're named, they're, they're numbered really weird. Because it's not, it's, it's, there are only 15 broods, but I just mentioned brood 23. It's brood 1 through 11, then 13, 14, 19, 22, and 23. So it's like tennis scoring or something like that. Just <laughs> random numbers. Well, maybe the other ones are extinct. Oh, that's actually, that's true. That's a, that, I, I hadn't actually thought of that. That might be the case. Um, so the question is, how do a cicadas know when to emerge? They obviously can't count, but the reality is it's a survival of the fittest. If a cicada emerges too early, like I mentioned, it's probably not going to find a mate, and it's definitely going to get eaten. Um, so eventually, all of the cicadas with those loner genes that cause them to emerge um, earlier without the group, uh, those are picked off because they don't reproduce and they die. So the only ones that are left are the ones that hatch with the group and the group ad their life cycle adapts to best uh, suit their survivability odds which is an, a, a life cycle of um, prime numbers so whew, that was a lot <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a whirlwind there of numbers I hope I explained that's it that's called well. information cessation <laughs> satiation yeah that's right information satiation yeah yeah well, uh, now that you're done, it's information if information cessation. Cessation, yes. I'm a cessationist for information. Uh, that's all I got. Any? Do you have anything else? I don't think so. All right. That was the cicada. That was... Uh, that's quite a bug. It is. Um, so for you out there in Podcastia, burrow goodly. Stay with the pack. And for goodness sake, don't let your periodic life cycle coincide with the population cycle of a specialist predator like the cicada <laughs> here in Life, Death, and Taxonomy. Reviews, reviews, reviews. We need reviews. Like any product or service, both flesh and blood people as well as cold, unfeeling algorithms like to see reviews for podcasts. Plus, it lets us know that you're out there and that you appreciate our show. So if you've been touched by an angelfish and feel moved to share your newfound love for animal information with the world, you'd do us a huge solid by leaving us a review here for Life, Death, and Taxonomy on your favorite podcasting app. Thanks, and see you next week. is my favorite in the world podcast. <laughs> oh no.